you want to not eat any lectins, but every plant has them in within them. So you kind of don't want to eat lentils all of a sudden because they have a lot of... And then even the sprouts even more because a small plant needs to protect itself even more. So there is even more lectins. So some people, when they sprout, when the plant is light green, put it out into the sun. Like, you don't need the sun at the start to do your sprouts. You just need a lot of air and water. And once you have your little um, seeds, seedlings, you put them towards the sun so it gets dark green. Then you can eat it, maybe. But I wouldn't want to eat light green sprouts because of the lectins, you know. So there is the lectins, that there is a ton. So I'm just telling you, shortcut, historical analysis, shortcut to understand why fats and oils are good, but not do the gallbladder stuff that Andreas Moritz um, recommends and then the blood type diet. If you're old and you can eat a lot of meat and now everybody wants to be vegan. So everybody's gonna develop a iron deficiency <laughs> over time. So yeah, that. And he is explaining about type A1 and type A2 protein. So we got in Europe and all westerly countries a A1 protein within our cows and that one isn't digestible as the World Health Organization put out as information 1960. Can't be digested by a lot of grown-ups and especially by a lot of nations it can't be digested it can maybe be digested by people living far up in the north that's how they put it but some african coming here having a lot of milk will get sick in india they have a a2 protein so those cows look different that milk isn't so hard to digest Around here, sheep's and goat milk is e easy to digest. Um, you know, uh, grains we don't really digest as blood type A. Maybe it's just, you know, when they say the, the milk, like milk, curd, cheese, blah, 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 blah. We don't digest because <laughs> it's just this A1 protein we don't really uh, digest and maybe it says here in blood type A don't eat um, this you know corn and, and lots of um, grains maybe because you know humans uh, just don't uh, do well when they you know life span is um, diminished by doing so well that's a historical study Sonia and her partner did within this book. So, yeah. So now that I know that I got to kind of, you know, start with the sauerkraut, then have this moisturizing thing here, and then have something sulfur and the oil. Later in the day, we will have some raw. Well, I need red stuff. That one contains iron. So carrots, beetroot, oh, that one is whitish something. I will just make a salad and put some olive oil and maybe some mustard into and some vinegar. I don't know how I'm going to survive this because I ordered it. It'll be here in within two days. And... Yeah, I'll see. But I will have to start eat raw because raw, you know, they say, don't drink raw milk. I've been living on a farm where they were giving us raw milk and the cheese was made from raw milk as well. Well, that one is 
heated 45 degrees Celsius something. So you can't really say any cheese would be, you know, having uh, been done with raw milk. But nevertheless, I will have to start eating some kind of raw, you know, the enzymes within a carrot that you put into your mouth and chew right away and that doesn't have any contact to oxygen air is very healthy. That's why I said study macrobiotics because in macrobiotics they don't, eat, they don't just teach you uh, seasonally. They tell you a lot of things about like how to cut even the stuff. When you know that a baby drinking mother's milk directly from the mother, that baby stays healthy. But the baby having the mother's milk that went from the mother's um, milk dispenser to a bottle and then to the baby, that baby will get sick later in life. Babies that have no mother's milk at all will develop diabetes. These are studies, long-time studies. I learned from Walter White. He's a bit into this Christian thing, so don't get caught there. Just watch one video of his. He's got it on in English and German about milk. And he explains about black tea, green tea, and lots of things. So just, uh, you know, learn. <laughs> but maybe spend more time with macrobiotics, with this carnivore thing, understanding the gallbladder thing, because lots of people haven't understood that cutting all sugars, that's what you got to do. There is a Viva or MTV moderator and she's called Anastasia and she didn't want to have those sugar cravings. So, comp, she married a real you know, comp. So you can find her. For 11, 12 years now, she's not eating any industrialized mono sugars. She has dried fruits from time to time, but her skin looks very young. She hasn't gotten one day older since. So that's the effect of not intaking any sugars. So when you go through a supermarket, what have you got there? Sugars. Even in tomato sauce, they put in some sugar. Check ketchup. In there you have all the things a human tongue likes. I'm sure they even put vanilla in there. Vanilla. Because a human tongue needs sugar, salt, sour, herb, you know. So that's why they, you know why ketchup is so successful, because he got it all. Paracelsus, he's teaching that if you have a plant, this is a plant. Okay, roots, stem, leaves, flower. You take the upper or the lower part or all of it. So if you take the whole plant, you get the substance within that plant that will heal you. And you get all the side substances that are also within that plant that will accompany this substance that will heal you so that this substance that will heal you doesn't make you sicker because if you had from this plant just the healing substance as a mono substance it would make you sick so in taking pills and all of that won't work if it's a mono substance but if it's chlorella spirulina you know things from nature that one would, I, I say, you know, help. So I learned this from Paracelsus. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs>